Hello there, it's Jilly here from funcrafttodoathome.com. This film is an updated version of the film I did last year called How to Make Alcohol Ink Pendants. It was very popular, but some people called me to say they wished I'd been more specific with certain things. So, I've remade the film and I'm going to show you from start to finish. So you're going to need some tin foil, which you would find in your kitchen, you know, that we all use for cooking. Um, you're going to need some alcohol inks, like the ones I've got here. Uh, I believe that's mermaid, raspberry and botanical. Um, but I have got, um, I do show you further along all of the inks that I used in this project. You'll also need some alcohol blending solution. And I do recommend that you use rubber gloves, although I didn't actually use rubber gloves all the way through mine, and you'll see I get ink all over my fingers. I also recommend using a mask while you're using the alcohol ink. You're also going to need a brayer to roll over the um, tin foil when you've scrunched it up to flatten it out again. So scrunch up your tin foil, and uh, not too tight, otherwise you will tear it like like there and when you open it out again so just flatten it down and then take your brayer and roll over the where you've scrunched to flatten it out again and this is where you're going to get the lovely little facets that create this sort of faux dichroic look in the finished product so flatten it out and then tear off if you've you know if you've accidentally ripped then scrunch it up again and flatten it out again with your brayer. Just be careful that you don't rip it. So you can see here the, the fantastic crazed patterns that you get in and this is where the alcohol ink is going to sit and give you the effect that you want. Okay, so these are all the different colours that you'll see me use all the way through this project. As I said, I will put a link in my blog and the alcohol blending solution that you will sort of squirt around to, to blend everything. So I've taken a small piece of the paper that, that I tore off just to start off with. I'm using Mermaid, Raspberry and Botanical here. It doesn't look like much when you see it here. I'm just kind of, you know, randomly dumping ink all over the place. But there is a method in my madness here. And then, intermittently, you would use the alcohol blending ink and then come back with more colour. Just keep on adding colour until you're happy with what you've got. And there's several places that I just pointed out there that I'm quite happy with. You can see close up here, kind of effects that you get from blending the inks. I usually do several pieces of foil. Um, oh, you can see the mess I made of my hands there. Um, yeah, so that one is, um, I think that's Purple Twilight and Botanical again. And I quite like purple and green together. It sounds a bit oof, like it wouldn't work, but I really love what happens when these blend. When you get used to doing this, you actually, you actually, you know what you're going to get, and you can put your colours down onto the tin foil accordingly. And these, I believe, are Lemonade and Rust. And I love these two colours together. I did do a, a patch up the corner there where I just did Lemonade and Rust. And I was able to punch out a circle with just those two colours. Absolutely love the effect of them. It looks a bit like amber when you get it under the glass. So you can see the different effects that you get from, from just 
squirting different colors down onto the foil. And now this is an approach I use if, I mean, some people probably don't want to, you know, just dump ink all over a big piece of tin foil. So you can just put in small areas. And again, I love these two colors together. I think that was botanical and mermaid. And again, I'm I'm putting specific colours down on a small area of the tin foil. I'm now about to put some raspberry on top of this purple twilight. And this is a more economical way of using the alcohol inks, which are quite expensive, rather than just sort of dump it all over a big piece. And here I am going for specific effects with specific colours rather than being more random. And as I said, you, as you do more and more of this, you get to know the effects that you want and how you can achieve them. And you can really only do that with trial and error. So these, oh, I believe that was Gold Fixative and Poppy Field, which you'll see in the next shot to the just down in the right hand corner there that was a the gold fixative up oh, sorry the gold mixative and the poppy field red yep you can see why you need rubber gloves so this is the one inch circle punch that you will need to punch out the the areas of color these are the one inch bottle caps and depending on how you're going to flatten them you will need either this big shot machine which I'll show you how to use or a hammer and a, and a pad to, to um, flatten them on. You'll need a pair of Euro punch pliers or a hammer and piercing tool to make the holes in the bottle caps. You will need some uh, split rings and some black card, I know it looks a bit grey here, but you need black card, some very sticky all-purpose glue and some ordinary PVA glue. And I would recommend using some sandpaper and you will see why shortly. Fairly fine sandpaper. And you will need some of these lovely glass domes, which again I will... I will try to find suppliers in both the UK and the US and put links to them in my blog. You can also use these resin domes which are sticky. I'll put links to where you can get them. You will need something to hang your, your lovely pendants on when they're made. I use these 18 inch curb chains in either silver or black. There's also a leather thong there that I've already laid down. Okay so we need to put holes in these bottle caps so we can get our split rings on and this is what I've had lots of questions about. How do you put the holes in? Well I use this, this lovely punch tool which makes things so easy and I do this before I flatten if I use the punch tool. If you don't have a punch tool, uh, here I'm just doing a black one. If you don't have a punch tool, I'm going to show you in a moment how you can make holes. Now I'm showing you... Okay, so there's the punch tool. It's a really brilliant little tool. I'm going to show you how I pierce the bottle caps that haven't been flattened. That's what I'm doing here. I'm doing one that hasn't been flattened. And this is quite tricky. So you literally just position the tool as best you can and just knock the piercing tool through with a hammer. Here I'm showing you one that's already been flattened and it's much easier to get the piercing tool into one of the indentations. You just turn it over, put your piercing tool in place and hammer through and that's how you get the hole. The hole is slightly smaller on this one, obviously it depends on what size piercing tool that you use. But you can see there the hole is very neat and 
comes out much better if you've already flattened the bottle cap. Now how you flatten these depends on whether you have got the big shot machine. If you are using a big shot you open up both the tabs on the base plate so you're just using the base. Put that through, put the tabs through first then take one of the clear plates that you would normally put your embossing folders in between lay your bottle caps on with the smooth back upwards and the, and the frilly bit down on the base plate then take the other half of the two clear plates and put on top mine are not so clear anymore I think I need some new ones and then just push that through, wind that through as you would anything that you put through the big shot. So this is a, a quick way to do lots of bottle caps at once. If you don't have a big shot you can do this with a hammer and watch out for your fingers. I have so many times I've bashed my fingers and it hurts. So just tap 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 round the edge with the hammer and gradually it will fold down completely. Okay. I've actually tried to keep the noise levels down on this because some people complained that all they loved, they liked the video. There was a few loud noises that came suddenly into their headphones, so <laughs> I've kept the the sound effects to a minimum. You can probably do it faster than this, but I'm doing it quite slowly to, you know, so you can see what I'm doing. So there's the one that's been put through the big shot. It's one of the ones put put through the big shot, and this is the one that I did by hand. Now you can see that the the middle does stay in better shape if you do it by hand but actually it doesn't really affect the final outcome of the pendants so I've got four there that have been flattened in the big shot and then one by hand the next thing I do is rough up the front, I mean you don't have to do this but I quite like the grungy look and I like to take the paint off some of mine to let the silver show through it's up to you, it's just an idea these are split ring tweezers to help save your thumbnails when you're, when you're putting lots of split rings on and this is how you do it, you just literally push through and then I, I these are good for opening the split rings but I find them quite clumsy to actually put the rings on so I'm doing it by hand here this, the, the tweezers are brilliant if you are going to do hundreds of these you will need to open up the, the split rings with the tweezers because it hurts if you do too many without the tweezers so it's quite simple to, to put the split rings on you just open them up and hook them in and work them round. I like to put two on some of mine if I want to hang a charm on, at the bottom. Now here I've got my dried um, tin foil sheets with the alcohol inks on. I get one of the glass domes and I just position them and see where I actually want to punch out. When you use the one inch punch, be really gentle push in stages because otherwise the, the tin foil will just buckle so just squeeze and squeeze gently there you go so do this with as many pieces of the tin foil as you want I've done five here I did actually end up doing another one so I ended up with six pendants And, then, and the next thing I'm going to do is punch out 
some circles in black card because I like to put these inside the bottle caps to give me a smooth surface to work on. I use the sandpaper to rough up the paint in the middle of the, if you've got painted bottle caps like these ones have been painted black, they came to me already painted black, I rough up a little bit so that the, the card has got a, a, a more of a, a surface to, to um, stick to. Then I put a dollop of very, very sticky clear glue in there, put my black card circles inside, push them down and then let them dry. You don't have to do this, but it does. I find that it's better to have a nice smooth surface to work on. Um, in the silver caps, I do put white card. So there, there's my caps already prepared, flattened. They have the split rings and the card stuck in, and I've let them dry. The next step is to put your tin foil circles in. I use PVA glue for this and it's never ever let me down. So just put a very thin layer of PVA glue and you do have to be careful when you position your tin foil circles. While the glue is still wet you need to take the opportunity to kind of move the tin foil circles around to make sure you haven't got it too far over to one side and leave, leave a gap. Sometimes I, you know, if I'm making a video and I'm doing things quite quickly I can end up not getting things quite straight. So just squish that down and then once you're happy with where it is you just leave it to dry. If you've got any little overlapped bits that haven't cut properly, you can just sort of push them down the side. And there are my five that are now ready to have their glass domes or these resin domes. I'm going to show you the resin domes first. You just peel them off and then hold them between your thumb and index finger like this. And you just have to feel your way you let your fingertips slightly touch the bottle cap. It's difficult to explain. You need to practice, practice, practice with this to make sure that you get the dome central because they don't, they're not quite an inch in diameter. So you can actually get them too, you know, too far over to one side. I love the resin resin domes and I also love the glass domes. They both have their own merit, so I kind of use a mixture of both. So I'll just show you that again. Just peel it off and lay it on there and push down, put lots of pressure front and back. Just squeeze, squeeze down. They absolutely make these pendants. Get that lovely refre reflection from underneath, which does give it that dichroic look. So I used diamond glaze to put this one on. I'm really sorry, I had problems with actually getting the glue onto the dome because it was drying up. So with the next one, I used Anita's Clear Gloss. And you literally just, you know, squeeze it over the top of the dome till you've got a good dollop on there. And then you put the dome into place and you see the glue spread out immediately. Push that right down so that the glue spreads under the entire surface of that dome. And push and push so there's no air bubble. You may see the glue squish up the sides as it has here. Ideally, you just want to put maybe a smaller dollop than I did there, but it doesn't matter because this glue does dry clear. And then you leave it to dry. So these are the six that I did. 
And obviously the next thing you want to do is put chains on and attach any charms. If you've put two split rings on your bottle cap, then obviously you can add a charm. And there you have my alcohol ink pendants. Thank you for watching. Do come back soon when I will have more ideas for you to try out. Bye.